Okay, welcome everybody. I can see the numbers joining us now, so that's great. Um, my name is Laura Creevy and I'm a Skills Days and Officer for the Admissions Office in Maynooth University. And you're joining the Education and Teaching Degrees webinar. So um, we have a number of colleagues from the Education Department, the Frebel Department of Primary Early Childhood Education joining us to talk to you today. Um, so we'll be covering topics like the Bachelor of Education in Primary Teaching, the BA in Early Childhood Teaching and Learning, and the uh, science of education options as well. Okay, so a lot of information here. So what we're going to do first is um, we will begin with um, Neil Fortune as the head of the Department of Frebel. What I will say to everyone that is joining us to please type questions into the Q&A box you see below that will be answered throughout um, the different talks. So please do. And um, if we've time to get some live questions, absolutely we will. But we do have a lot going on today. And um, we have student representatives from each of the, the uh, study areas joining us too, which is going to be great for the student perspective. So really encourage you to type in your questions and they will be answered um, by my colleagues throughout the talks as well. OK, so I'm going to hand over to Neve now. OK, so thank you very much. That's great. Hopefully you can see my screen there. Um, thanks very much, Laura. It's lovely to be here. Um, Virtually, I know we can't be in person, but it's uh, great to be here today. So as uh, Laura said, my name is Neve Fortune. I'm the head of department here in Freville Department of Primary and Edu Early Childhood Education. And uh, delighted to talk to you for a few minutes today. And I have a wonderful, joined by a wonderful student as well, Jennifer, who's going to give the student perspective. Uh, so we'll um, start if that's okay. And um, I, I've introduced myself, so we'll keep moving. So we've two routes into uh, primary teaching in the Frebel department. We have our BA degree, uh, primary, and sorry, I'll go back there again. And we have our professional masters or PMED. Okay, so uh, I'm going to mention both of those today. Um, we'll talk about the Bachelor of Education first of all. Uh, it's the, the B.Ed. and what are the entry requirements? Uh, you may know these already. So a H4 in Gaelga, uh, O4 or H7 in Mathematics, O4 or H7 in English. And the CAO points this year were 564. We had a bit of a jump this year. Um, and obviously that changes from year to year. Just on the screen there as well, you can see the mature um, entry for the B.Ed. Moving into the PMED, uh, which is a two year master's program, level nine qualification. And you can see the entry requirements on the screen there 04 H7 math, 04 H7 in English, and our H4 in Gaelga. Um, and obviously, you need a 2 2 in an undergraduate degree. Um, and at the moment, the applicants attend an English interview. So uh, let's tell you a little bit about uh, primary school teaching. Uh, we're delighted that our Frebel graduates are qualified to teach infants to sixth class. They are fully recognized by the Department of Education and Skills and the Teaching Council. And it's a four year, the BEd is a four year level eight qualification and which is sometimes necessary internationally to have that four year degree. Uh, so you'd be very qualified to teach abroad. A little bit about Friedrich Frebel, that's a, a picture there of him. Uh, we're delighted in the Frebel department to be um, guided by Friedrich Frebel's values and philosophy. Um, he was very much a pioneering educator and philosopher, founder of the kindergarten movement. I'm sure you've he heard of kindergarten um, and very much based on active learning, play and the holistic development of the child. Very child centred, which is very in line with our curriculum now and very much guided by those child centred principles. So everything that we do in Frebel is guided by this philosophy and values um, and very much active learning when you come to Frebel, hopefully uh, very soon, uh, you'll experience this lovely active learning. So we keep moving. Um, they're the Frebel's lovely gifts to see one in action there and uh, the traditional gifts that Frebel designed and very much part used in schools and early childhood settings all around the country and internationally. So just to tell you a little bit about uh, the course, we have divide, divided the B.Ed. into different strands. So we have our foundation studies, uh, which is the first strand, to give you just a flavour of what you might study if you join the Preble Department for primary teaching. So we have psychology, language study, history of education, philosophy, sociology and inclusive education. So you can see a huge, broad study there in the foundation areas. 
Uh, moving into competency, which is our second strand, which is the competency and uh, building co students confidence and competence. So we value very much the students own competency in English, Gaelic, and maths and other areas. So electives are offered um, in different areas of the curriculum. So you might decide to take some in visual arts or music and so on. So we really take time in small groups to build students uh, own confidence and competence in those areas. Moving swiftly on, strand three are the methodology subjects, um, and this is where you really get uh, active in your small groups um, and you have great fun. So we've Momunt na Gaelga, which is the teaching of Gaelga, of Irish, English methods, um, with the teaching of reading, language and writing for children, maths methods, so the teaching of maths in primary school, religious education, arts education, so the full suite of visual arts, music and drama. So you might be uh, playing the recorder or making pottery uh, in our lovely visual arts um, lab. We have social personal health education, physical education, and lovely hall where you uh, get to experience all the strands of the physical education curriculum, social, environmental and scientific education, profession development, and ICT in uh, primary teaching education. Looking at our last uh, strand, which I know students are always very interested in this one, is the strand four, which is school placement. So we're very um, happy with our structure of school placement in Freble. We have 36 weeks of placement in schools, and we have a huge variety of placements in a very supportive way for students from the beginning right through their journey. Uh, so just to give you a sense, you can see the screen there of how we uh, scaffold and support students into school placement. So you start with observation, so you go into a lovely infant class and observe the teacher. Uh, then you work in that same infant class in January and spend three weeks teaching just three lessons a day and organizing play centers. Then moving into year two, where you look at first, second classes um, and into third, fourth, you can see. And also intertwined in that is an academic service placement where you get to experience different settings outside of schools and a Gwail school placement where you go and experience lovely uh, Gwailga, um, teaching Gwailga, Tri Gwailga in your, um, in your Gwail school placement. Year three then and year four, you can see on the screen, we move into fifth, sixth class and then back to infants and you move into an SEM experience there in year three. I should have said in year two as well, we have a paired placement, which is a very important scaffolded part of our SP, uh, our school placement, where you get an experience with another uh, a student in the department. And then right up to our final year, which is our year four, where you have a 10 week extended placement. Our students are out in that at the moment and they uh, complete an SEN or special educational needs placement and in mainstream as well. And that's a wonderful experience before they finish up qualified as primary school teachers. So just moving on, um, we have lots of wonderful experiences for you uh, awaiting in Freble. We have Erasmus opportunities in third year where you can visit one of the countries up on the screen there from September to December and experience all of that um, abroad and then come back into the Freble department in January. Um, we have Kultur Gaelic on Lord Jusakalosta, and we have lots of lovely Gaelic talk, um, placements where you go off and you speak Irish for a couple of weeks and, and develop your own Gaelic and also Gaelic school placements. So it's very important to us. Gaelic is very much central to what we do in the department. On the screen there, uh, you can see um, the dedicated spaces that we have. That's our lovely School of Education. We're really proud of it. Uh, we have a stunning drama space, music uh, room, uh, visual arts studios, maths and science rooms, early childhood uh, rooms. Uh, we also have a wonderful roof garden, uh, IT suite, study spaces, uh, P Hall, just a few uh, minutes away. So we have lots of facilities in Maynooth that we'd really welcome you into. Uh, the library, bookstore, you can see it on the screen there, uh, sports, sports facilities and students union. Um, Jennifer's going to come in now in a minute and give you the, the lovely, vibrant and dynamic student experience that we have. And just before I finish with you, um, just up on the screen there, I think people often ask, you know, you know, there's the obvious primary school teacher, but also this um, B.Ed. and P.M.Ed. degree can uh, bring you into lots of other areas uh, like principalship. Uh, you may work in a support as a support teacher. Uh, you may work in the new curriculum supporting teachers outside um, of the classroom. So you, you go and support teachers in the curriculum uh, you may decide to do further studies as an educational psychologist so there's lots of routes um, beyond teaching for our graduates so I'm going to pass over now to Jennifer who's going to give you the real story uh, the, the student perspective and I'll be on the Q&A for any questions please don't hesitate to ask
Thanks, Jennifer. Perfect. Thanks very much, Neve. That's great. Um, okay, hi everybody. Um, as Neve said, my name is Jennifer. I'm a B.Ed. student, and I'm in my fourth year now at the moment. Um, so I thought I'd start with uh, talking about what the differences are between Freville and maybe some other teaching colleges, because I remember when I was in sixth year, I was quite confused as to what the differences were between all of the colleges. Um, so first of all, as Neve outlined um, in the department, we follow the philosophy of the educational theorist Friedrich Freble. And as she mentioned, he's known for his play-based ped pedagogy, which just means learning through play, his love of the outdoors and his child-centered teaching. And therefore in Freble, we are very much um, encouraged to take a similar approach while out on placement and while we're in lectures actually in the department as well, uh, as Neve knows. <laughs> um, this experience I've found has um, made the children very passionate about learning when out on placement and I don't think other teaching colleges really put as much emphasis on that approach as we do here in Freble and um, it's very special. Another thing that makes Freble stand out from other colleges is the small course size. So in my group, for example, in my whole year group, there is 60 students or thereabouts. But a lot of the time I don't even have lectures with those 60 students. It's usually around 30 in the classroom at a time. Um, and sometimes it can be even less depending on the module or the seminar. Um, and this is a great way to get to know everybody in the year. Um, and develop a good network of support as well, especially well between students, but also between the students and the lecturers. Um, and then let me see, placement is next. I would like to talk about the first year placement in a little bit more detail, if that's okay. So in first year, I remember uh, we went out into schools in around October, between October and Christmas time for one day a week, um, every week, we got to um, experience the school routines while we were out there, observe the class teacher, ask questions, um, get to know the host teacher as well, and most importantly, get to know the children that we would be um, teaching out in January, in school out in January. And I have friends in other teaching colleges, and I remember them telling me that in first year, they didn't get out into schools until the second semester. Um, so it's actually a really good advantage to have getting out into schools early uh, because it makes you realize um, what the course is all about and make sure you've uh, chosen the right course for you as well. That's uh, it's brilliant. So another thing I'm quite aware of is um, some other teaching colleges offer an opportunity to specialise in a specific subject area and we don't really do that in Freble, we do a little bit and um, we have something very similar instead. It's um, uh, electives in third and fourth year which are pretty much the same thing. Um, so the electives actually allow you to try something completely new as well as honing a skill that you're already developing. So you have actually an extra option um, by doing an elective. So last year, for example, um, I did a drama elective, which I really enjoyed. And drama is something that I've always kind of had an interest in. I always really enjoyed in school, but I've never had much experience of it outside of school. And I wouldn't always be confident teaching it, um, even though I really like it. So Fred are after giving me the opportunity to develop that skill even further, which I find really beneficial. And I feel more confident going to schools now and teaching it by myself. And I'd like to reiterate that I'm in my final year now and I don't feel at a disadvantage at all having not specialized in a specific subject area, which is something I probably would have been thinking about in sixth year of secondary school. And this is because everything is done to such a high standard in the travel department um, and everybody kind of gets an equal shot at every subject if that makes any sense um yeah and then i'd like to talk a little bit about our experience with covid last year and um, so while a lot of other teaching colleges had to close down and go online for a lot of their lectures we were very very lucky in Freble. Uh, we got to uh, engage in a lot of in-person lectures for a good por portion of the year and this was a result of um our course being so small um, and because the COVID is so unpredictable at the moment, nobody knows what's going to happen next year. And um, if God forbid there was another lockdown of any kind, uh, the chances of you being in person and on campus for your lectures are higher in Freville than they would be in other colleges. And um, then when we did have to go online eventually last year, uh, we used the medium of Microsoft Teams. 
and although this is very tough on both the students and the lecturers, um, there was actually a really, really good network of communication kept open, which is fantastic. The lecturers were extremely accommodating and understanding in terms of deadlines and um, external pressures as well outside of the course, which was great. Um, okay, so I'd like to talk a little bit about the facilities now in Leeds University, if I have a little bit more time, hopefully. Um, I hope I'm not rambling too much. <laughs> so the library is uh, on the south campus. Uh, Neve mentioned that briefly a second ago. It's a fantastic facility to have. Uh, it's very spacious. It's great for uh, if you just kind of want to get down and start an assignment. Um, brilliant if you're a little bit of a procrastinator like me. Um, and you have access to thousands and thousands of books, ebooks, articles, journals, um, everything under this one that you can think of. But not only that, you can also access it from the comfort of your own home or your student accommodation by going onto the library website, which is online. And the staff are always extremely friendly. And there's even an IT support desk, which I've had to utilize a few times. There's a reason I don't have a PowerPoint today. <laughs> and there's also a few photocopiers, printers, which are also very useful around the time of placement. And um, you'll see all the Freville students at once there in the library surrounding the photocopiers around placement time. Um, the Phoenix building is another building we have on campus, and this is our sports centre. Uh, there's three sports halls in the Phoenix centre. There's the main sports hall, the small one, and the PE classroom, which is what we, we use for our PE lectures with Tony. Um, there's also a gym and a cafe, which serves hot food, um, an astro pitch, and a few other ordinary grass pitches as well. Um, the student union is also a big part of Maynooth University, and it's very active at the moment. The student representatives are always willing to um, stop and talk to you if you have a problem. Um, for example, a few years ago, there was a movement in the department and all over Ireland to um, get the Gwail Talk grant back for student teachers. And my year group went into the Dáil to protest and it was brought to the attention of the student union and they got behind us in any way that they could. Um, and on a side note, the SU bar has great student deals on breakfast, lunch, dinner, and they have amazing chicken goujons and chips and curry sauce. <laughs> um, and now I'm sure people are dying to know about clubs and societies because this is a little bit different to secondary school. When you come to college, there's loads of opportunities to get involved. Um, so if you go on to uh, msu.ie even, there is a full list of all the clubs and societies that are available in Maynooth University. And there's genuinely something for everybody I'm not exaggerating when I say this there's um your typical team sports like uh football hurling camogie um and but there's also quite unusual ones like trampolining ultimate frisbee um handball which I'm a member of it's very good um and then in terms of societies there's also a very wide variety um so to name a few there's drama musical yoga, dance, uh, the Fraggle Society, obviously very the most important one, um, Disney, fundraising, and there's plenty more that I just can't even think of at the moment. Um, but the clubs and societies are a fantastic way to get to know people outside of the course and make friends. Um, yeah, and I'd highly recommend joining. Um, and I think that's all for now. I'm not sure, I probably have gone over the time, Laura. <laughs> there probably no, isn't time for questions. That's, that's absolutely perfect, Jennifer, that was great. Um, and Neve, thank you very much. There's actually just one question, but there's actually two that are somewhat linked that I might just kind of put together for you. Um, initially, if the question is relating to, um, I suppose someone individually wanted to figure out, do, is the masters that you have to do, you have to do the PME basically after your primary teaching or are they separate courses? So that's yeah. the, obviously the one side of it. And then linked is a person asking about doing an arts degree to then go on to do the primary school teaching. So they're kind of one, one of the same question. Yeah. Maybe if you'd be happy to yeah. just talk about that. So, yeah, so really quickly, thanks for that, Laura. And um, they're separate. Uh, so the BED and the PME are separate. You wouldn't do both. You'd either en enter in through the CAO and do the BED and four years then you're you're done qualified as a primary school teacher or you may choose to do another degree um, and Patsy's going to be talk, talking about the early childhood degree now could be a lovely option uh, you might decide to do that then you might decide later to do a PMED um, and so it's a two years master's program then after your degree and you would become a primary school teacher so um, the, the PMED is separate it's a two-year master's after any uh, degree level eight uh, but there is high competition I should say that high competition for those pace places uh, the government decides whether that goes ahead each year so that's kind of out of our control and the Amount that we're allowed to take in and at the moment there's an interview and as you saw on the slides uh, certain requirements so they're separate uh, but there is an option to do a PMED after a degree yeah 
Thanks. And ju yeah, just one last thing, because I mean, this is, I suppose, a common question I would actually get out in schools a lot. Yeah. Would be if someone was thinking about the arts degree route to then look to go on to do the PME afterwards, is there particular subjects that they should be doing or encouraged to be doing? Or is it obviously it's open to them? I suppose this is a common question. And obviously yeah. there's entry requirements to get into the PME that's still are the same as the yeah. original B Ed. But just in terms of the subject choice for students yeah. of interest in the arts. This is always asked. And, and yeah. you know, I think I'd be guided by my heart so yeah. I'd be guided by the subjects that I love um, but I suppose also with that you have to have a good standard of Gaelga so I mean we can't hide from that so you know if it's something you're interested in I think Gaelga is very you know it's a, that could be part of your degree um, but really I suppose we, we have a wide variety and we have students who study early childhood and study all that side as well which is lovely and they come in with a real strength and an understanding of early childhood uh, so that can be a real benefit so it's really up to the applicant we've had uh, I remember interviewing a, a, vet, a vet once who decided to, to come back and do uh, the PMED so people come from all walks of life and um, I wouldn't do uh, uh, subjects that I, I wasn't interested in uh, just feeling you know thinking I should do those uh, so I would choose ones that really I'm interested in uh, and bearing in mind that Gaelga it, you will need Gaelga yeah Brilliant. Thank you for Thanks that. So no, fully appreciate. And again, please do send in more questions because I know Neve and Jennifer will be happy to, uh, to keep an eye on those while the other presentations are going on. So yeah. I'm going to pass over Thank to um, Patsy Stafford now, who is the Deputy Head of the Federal Department. And um, if Patsy, you're happy to um, share your screen and I know you're going to have Antoinette join you as well. Yes. Thank Hi, you. everybody, and welcome to Maynooth University and the Federal Department. Um, so I'll just start off by, oh, oh, sorry, oh, there, okay, so my name is Patsy Stafford and I'm the Deputy Head of Department and a lecturer with responsibility for early childhood education in the department, and um, as Laura said, Antoinette is going to join me, who's a final year student um, on the BA, uh, so, um, our degree, um, our BA and early childhood degree programs, we have two, and I'll talk a little bit about both of them in a while. They reflect um, Frebel's ideology by incorporating active student-centered approaches to our teaching. So we applied the same methodology that we want you to use at schools. We use them um, with students in our lecture rooms um, so that you experience the methodologies yourselves. Our program covers a broad range of relevant and interesting modules. And again, I'll go through that, that in a few minutes. And they have a specific, oh, sorry. They have a specific focus on building a strong foundation among students to lead excellence in pedagogical practices. So teaching practices within the early childhood settings. Okay, so um, we started off in 2011 with an early childhood degree that we developed um, in collaboration with Early Childhood Ireland, and it was a three year part time level eight honours degree. And this was really in response to the sector's demand for a flexible progression route um, to degree level. And then um, just a few years ago, the Irish government um, directed that all level eight early childhood degrees had to be a four year programs, and they also had new criteria for the degrees. So therefore, all early childhood degrees had to be reaccredited re um, with the um, department. So, um, so in September 2021, um, we began a new full time four year BA in early childhood for people coming directly from Leaving Cert. And we've also reconfigured our part time degree, um, which is now in the final stages of approval. Our last intake on the old um, part time degree was, was um, September just gone in 2021. And so we expect that our new four year flexible degree, um, which is also developed in collaboration with Early Childhood Ireland, will start in September 2022. Um, so the aim of the degree is to bring multiple and critical perspectives to the fore in the preparation of early childhood professionals. And there's a real focus on teaching and learning um, and teaching young children and how ch young children learn on the degree. And so we aim to develop graduates who are competent, reflective practitioners with the knowledge, the skills and the commitment to build a community of learners, both in their own classroom, but with their colleagues in, in the early years settings as well. 
So our both of our early child degrees are level eight on the framework. Um, so they're both honors degrees, um, which is um, important. Um, and just to give you an idea of the different uh, modules that you would take if you were taking an early childhood degree in our department. These are the full-time modules I'm going to show you, but the part-time modules are very similar. So um, you'll, you'll get an idea by looking at this. Okay, so each year there are two larger modules and they run the whole year long. One is reflective practice. And this really in first year really helps you to um, navigate the whole university learning and writing academic um, uh, essays and you know becoming a learner in a university setting so we really support you in um, transitioning into the university and then the professional practice module is the other large module and this is about your time out in early year, early childhood settings and the, the focus is very much on observing young children um, to get to know what young children are like and get to know what their what their um, needs are um, and so we do introductions to a lot of the subjects that you will study over the four years. So things like child psychology, social and legal studies, that's all the policy um, around um, early childhood education. Curriculum and pedagogy is all about developing curriculum and how you teach that curriculum. Um, and then looking at um, the um, health and well-being of children, starting with infants and toddlers in first year, and then uh, inclusion, which is looking at children with additional needs, and then looking at different um, curriculum approaches in early childhood education. Then in year two, we develop on those um, and we have a whole module devoted to play because play is a really big part of the Frebel philosophy, but also it's the main way that young children learn. And so we really focus on play as a methodology and as a way for children to learn. And we also look at setting up um, children's spaces or environments that, that encourage children in lots of different ways um, and, then you also have reflective practice and professional practice, the larger um, elements. Um, but in year two, we look at integrating theory and practice. Um, so looking at connecting the theory you're learning about to the practice out in the settings um, in um, second year. And then in third year, again, we continue with all of these subjects in deeper level, obviously, and we really look at the context in third year, um, looking at um, children, um, their families, their um, the community that they're growing up in. Um, and we also look at the creative side of it. And then in fourth year, um, we look at the reflective practice as the educator as an action researcher. And this is the year where you do your thesis and you do a big um, action research. So you're researching your own practice um, and you're writing a thesis about that. Um, we also do a lot of this year is about leadership. So we really focus a lot on leadership um, in the early years sector. So then just some general information about the degree. So there's two different degrees. There's MH003, which is the full time that runs through the day on the usual academic schedule. It's a four years full time. Um, and then the flexible degree, which is MH004. And this is really geared to people who work in the sector. Um, and so it's going to the new degree that's starting um, in September, it's going to be a blend of online and face to face. Um, and it'll be evenings and weekends, um, Saturdays, um, 10 to 4, and then also some block weeks during the year. OK, so then again, placement is something that people have a lot of questions about. So we have um, both of our degrees will require um, a minimum of 420 hours working directly with children. So in the full time degree, um, the students are out in in settings Monday and Fridays um, and their lectures are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then they um, they also do blocks of placement during the year um, on the flexible degree or the part-time degree um, people are working in their settings and that's considered their placement um, but they do have to do alternative settings um, and our placement coordinator helps you in provide in finding the places to make sure that they're quality experiences for you as the student
Um, so then to the qualification or the criteria for getting into the degree um, for the full time one, the points last year were 381 um, on the um, CAO. Um, and um, there is a requirement for um, six leaving cert subjects, including Irish and English. Um, and you have to be guard vetted and to be able to complete a placement in a TUSLA notified service. Um, and then mature um, applicants, there is a, uh, a different application process for them, but it's again through the CAO. Um, and again, you have to secure guard vetting. And then we also take students um, who come in through the QQI system, uh, FETAC courses, um, and if they have a level six in um, early childhood education, a full qualification, then they can get direct entry into year two. Um, and again, all needs uh, guard vetting. Okay, so um, just the flexible degree, um, the application will be through the CAO, but it will be through the advanced entry portal. Um, so that's for people with a level six early childhood degree qualification. Um, and the qualifications will be assessed following the application and then they'll be offered entry into year two if they have a, a level six early childhood qualification. Okay, so our degree is recognized in the sector as a high quality degree. Um, our involvement with Early Childhood Ireland gives us a really unique perspective because we have people who are very involved in um, on the ground with, with early year settings, but also involved in policy and um, advocacy for young children. So it's a really important connection that we really um, are very much appreciative of. And we think it brings a richness to our degree um, that maybe other degrees might not have. Um, and um, graduates can go on to do a range of postgraduate courses, including, as Neve said, the PM Ed um, to qualify to become a primary teacher. And it is a great background for early uh, primary teaching because um, your, your, the early childhood reaches right up to um, the um, primary junior infants and senior infants class. Um, now I'll give you an Antoinette's perspective to give the student perspective, um, and I'll turn over to Antoinette. Um, great. Uh, thanks, Patsy. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. As Patsy said, I'm in my final year of the BA Early Childhood Teaching and Learning. Um, I've been working in the sector for 21 years um, and finally decided to go back. Um, I'm in the part time uh, course, which is fantastic for me because it meant I continue working full time as well as um, gain my degree. Um, as we know, early ed, it's the foundation for children's future. Um, and development and the degree allows us to be part of that. Um, it's very practical, it's relevant, and it's very interactive. Uh, within the classroom, we have, um, there's around 28 in ours at the moment. There are small classrooms, I think as Jennifer touched on earlier on, we have small group activities, so they're really, really interactive. Um, the sector as a whole, it's, it's ever changing. And the degree is uh, applicable to this and it changes. The modules are very adapted to us being hands-on um, with, uh, with the children. So as, as Patsy has already touched on a lot of the modules, we've creativity. Um, again, it's something I wouldn't have believed I was capable of, um, but after doing the module in second year, um, it's brought uh, music, uh, art, and the relevance of it. Again, connecting it back to practice and theory. Um, the, uh, as I said, we do small group presentations and it also builds on your personal skills as well as your professional skills. So you're dealing with inspections coming in, uh, dealing with small uh, interviews like this. So it's, it's really, as a whole, it does help professionally and personally. Um, and Pat's also touched on it around our placement um, in the part time when we also have to do a 15 hours uh, alternative placement. And for me, that gave me a little insight into other services, working with different ages. I work with the ECC, so I'm kind of from age three up. Um, so I worked with the toddler's room. And again, it's another insight into different areas and uh, what's needed. Um, I think Jennifer touched on all the other aspects of the of the 
social life and all that uh, and that's also available to the part-timers as well um, and the early ed. Um, we have a fabulous writing centre that's available for everybody to use um, and I really really if you are use it it's there the library is fantastic setup um, and as uh, Patsy was saying that these are available for all of the students all of the time. Um, as I said, I think Jennifer basically covered most of the rest of it. Um, at the end of the day, if you're passionate about early ed, um, you'd be passionate about a degree. Thanks, Patsy. Thanks, Thanks Antoinette. Okay, um, just before I tell you the postgraduate um, options, I just should say how much this sector, the early childhood sector is really expanding at the moment. There's a big push to professionalize the sector and bring them in line with um, uh, teaching in other sectors like primary and secondary. Um, and so there's a lot of um, changes going on in the sector and a lot of opportunities for people um, with degrees in the sector. Um, so with the degree, um, you can go on to do um, postgraduate studies, obviously in lots of different areas, but the ones that we offer in um, Maynooth University in education are the Masters of Education Research and Practice, uh, the Master of Education with an Early Childhood Specialism that we, we offer with the Education Department, and then um, you can go on to do the Professional Masters of Education the pri for primary teaching. So there's lots of opportunities for post graduate studies. Um, if you um, have any questions going forward, um, you can always contact us on the Frebel department at mu.ie, but you can also um, follow us on Twitter on Early BA, um, and you'll hear about, um, you know, things that, that we're involved in, um, but also um, it's an opportunity um, to find out when other open days or um, presentations or um, other um, ways to find out about things in the department. Okay, thank you, Laura. I think that that's, that's it. That's brilliant, Patsy. Thank you very much. Um, just one very quick question, if you have time, just before we sure. move on. Um, there was a question come in, just double checking about the Irish requirement for the early childhood okay. education. Is it a H4 like primary or do no. you have to pass? No, it's not. It's, 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 um, it's just a requirement of the universe coming into the university. Yeah, whatever. Perfect. So if you have an exemption in Irish, obviously that, that's, you, you don't have to have that. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so um, I'll stop Patrick, sharing. just stop sharing the screen yeah. now. It's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and thank you very much, Antoinette, as well. The great student perspective, I think, is really important to kind of take us through that. There's a few questions there, Patsy, as I know, come into as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll um, go into that. Thank you. Brilliant. So next we're joined by Dr. Zarin dugan who is going to talk to us about the uh, science and education options. And we have student representative Paul here as well to give his perspective. So Zarin, if you're happy to start. Thank you. Uh, Hello, everybody. Thanks for your interest in education since you are in this uh, webinar. Uh, in the background, you, uh, you see our lovely building, uh, School of Education building. All these three departments share this building. Uh, so we have uh, a big, relatively big classrooms that enable us uh, to uh, work in groups. And that's the nature of our, of, of our education uh, modules. Uh, so uh, today I will talk about a little bit about our course options because we have three uh, uh, options, three stand, uh, strands in BSc uh, in education and uh, a little bit about uh, uh, entry requirements for our um, courses and the modules you're going to take uh, according to the uh, courses and school placement, uh, which is an important experience uh, for teaching qualifications and your uh, career uh, options for uh, your feature and our contact details. So uh, in the uh, education department, uh, we have three, uh, three strands, uh, BSc science, uh, science with, with education, BSc mathematics and computer science with education, which is a new strand. Uh, right now we have uh, students from year one, year two, and year three. So uh, this is a very new program. Uh, next year, we will have our uh, fourth years and uh, first graduates in uh, mathematics and computer science. And uh, we have mathematics 
and mathematical physics with education, and finally, ma ma professional master of education. So in the uh, chat box, I see some questions about PME. Uh, so if you uh, want to uh, teach at secondary level, uh, th this is the program you, have, uh, you should apply. So if you have arts degrees, English degrees, and if you want to teach at secondary level, uh, our uh, PME uh, program, you should apply, and it takes two years uh, for the ones who have uh, their BA or BSc degree. Uh, but uh, for our students uh, who start from the BSc, it will take uh, five years to be qualified as a teacher. So they will spend four years in BSc and then uh, one, uh, one year in PME. So uh, the requirements for our uh, courses for science, uh, uh, there, there, there are some requirements for English, uh, Irish and sciences. Uh, I think uh, the only difference for uh, computer science and mathematics strand is like uh, you need to have age for uh, mathematics uh, for uh, mathematics and computer science strands. And the other requirements are the same for uh, all of our three options. Uh, so uh, the duration of the program is four years in BSc and then one more year in PME. So uh, after four years, you have your BSc degree, so you can have a BSc science, mathematics, or computer science degree. So you can work in other uh, sectors uh, other than education uh, with your uh, BSc degree. But we hope you will continue uh, one more year to become a teacher and, and to work in education. So I, I want to talk a little bit about our course structure for science. Uh, science is the biggest trend uh, in considering our number of students. And uh, Paul is one of them uh, that he will talk a little bit about his own experience in a few seconds, uh, in a few minutes. And uh, the first year uh, you will take your uh, science courses, physics, chemistry, biology, and mathematics. Uh, so you don't decide your teaching uh, subjects until the end of first year. So you are, you are free, you, you should experience uh, the university experience uh, to uh, decide which uh, teaching subject you are teaching. So you have one year option uh, uh, for deciding the teaching subjects. So you have to select two teaching subjects for uh, science, and it could be even mathematics, biology, physics, or chemistry. And you will also have education uh, module, but it's not credit. It's like uh, an introduction to education where you meet people uh, from our department, where you uh, discuss some general issues in, uh, in education, your own student experience, and your desires to become a teacher. And in the second year, uh, you will select, uh, you would already select your uh, teaching subject and you will select your uh, science uh, subjects accordingly. So two subjects and uh, each will uh, wait like 20 credits. And you will also have 20 credits of education. So you start uh, your education modules at the second year, and you will start uh, your class uh, school placement also at the second year. And uh, you, will learn, you will learn about education also. You will have, have your experience at schools. And third year, uh, you will have more methodology modules. So you will learn about how to teach your teaching subject, how to teach physics, science, mathematics. So uh, we will, you will have more specialty uh, uh, starting from year three. And uh, it's the same uh, with more responsibilities in school placement, more deeper uh, learning about methodology of your teaching subjects uh, through the uh, fourth year. And a fifth year, uh, you will have your PME degree so you will not have any uh, other modules in science departments, but you will have 60 credits from the education department and you will spend three days at schools. So it will be mostly at school. Uh, so you will have your own class. You will have uh, more responsibility at the school and you will spend two days in, in the university completing your uh, group research project, uh, your uh, your other projects uh, in PME year. So uh, 
mathematics, uh, the structure is almost the same, but uh, there is uh, this emphasis on mathematics and applied mathematics. So you will have uh, the options for mathematics, mathematical physics, and computer science in the first year, and physics. Uh, and you will have the same education, a uh, non-credit education module. So uh, uh, you will spend your time uh, with your science and computer science friends uh, in education modules, in most of the education modules. And you will uh, also have uh, your mathematics and applied mathematics um, modules uh, from the other departments uh, in the coming years. And the structure is the same. For, uh, you will you will need to spend one more year in PME. And this is the computer science uh, option uh, where you will have uh, through the second year, uh, you will have mathematics and computer science modules from the departments and the structure is the same. And so uh, I want to give a little bit more information about school placement experience, which is an important uh, part of our uh, program. So uh, you will start school placement in the second year, in the second second year, second semester. So we will have some experience at the university with, with our classmates uh, in the first semester. And then we will have the real experience at schools in the second semester. Uh, so uh, you will spend one weekday uh, in, throughout the semester. Uh, it will be team teaching. And I think we will, uh, I'm very happy to share this uh, recent news with you. Like, Right now we have a, a new agreement with Microsoft DreamSpace and we will change a, a little bit structure of the uh, year two school placement and uh, you, will have, you will be more active uh, than observe, observing the teaching in the classroom and uh, you will have a digital leader badge um, given by Microsoft and uh, we will uh, prepare the students for teaching uh, computer digital uh, literacy uh, digital skills to students uh, to pupils in the schools so uh, this is something new uh, new we are very excited about so uh, you will teach in, in you will start to teach in second year and in year three, year 3 you will have more responsibilities in the schools like two or three hours of teaching so probably you will uh, you will and teach the same class classes throughout the year. So you will get to know the students uh, by name, by their characteristics and change your strategies according to your students. So this is the dynamic structure of teaching. And uh, in year four, uh, we will have two weeks block teaching. So you will start as the school year starts before the university starts actually. Uh, you will start teaching as the school starts and uh, you will spend the 10 consecutive days at schools, which is an important part. And most of our students enjoy this activity and uh, this uh, experience. Uh, they feel more belonging to teaching pro uh, profession after this uh, year four experience. And then they will continue one, uh, to spend one weekday at school with more uh, hours of teaching. And in PME, as I mentioned, three days of teaching and more responsibilities. So uh, after four years, um, you are uh, qualified uh, to have your degree in BSc science or mathematics or computer science at level eight. And after spending one more year in profession, uh, professional master of education, you will be uh, qualified at level nine. Uh, after uh, the four, four years, after getting your degree and want to uh, go on with PME, uh, you, you are qual uh, qualified to be registered as, an, uh, as a teacher in uh, teaching council, which is an important part. So uh, you uh, and continue your PME uh, as a registered teacher in, uh, in teaching council. And uh, your you can, after, uh, after spending five years and uh, graduated from our program, uh, you can progress into teaching or you have some other options, uh, academic or uh, other professional options for you. So uh, I want to uh, 
I want to talk a little bit about this uh, complex mat matrix, although it looks complex. Uh, it is like um, for uh, if you select BSc science with education, then uh, for sure you can uh, teach at junior cycle level science. Uh, and for considering your teaching subjects, you can either teach biology, maths, biology, chemistry. So these combinations uh, you have. Uh, if you if you are uh, graduated uh, from BSc Mathematics and Computer Science, you are qualified uh, to teach uh, junior cycle mathematics and uh, junior cycle uh, coding. And uh, at li living cert level, you can teach mathematics and computer science. And for mathematics education, you, uh, you are qualified to teach junior cycle mathematics and mathematics and applied mathematics at living cert level. So these are your options. Uh, so you have lots of options. So um, although we do not encourage uh, any kind of e exits, but uh, you are free uh, uh, to uh, leave the course at some point. So we have this flexibility in the program. So after first or second year, you, you uh, have this flexibility. And since you have lots of science uh, modules from science and mathematics, uh, you can directly uh, go uh, go on uh, mathematics or science degree, so uh, without any loss. So th this is an advantage. Um, and uh, after the fourth year, you can also uh, leave the course with your BSc degree, uh, or uh, you can leave the course and come back in a in two years time uh, uh, to continue uh, PM, uh, with PME and be qualified as a teacher. And uh, after that, you can uh, still teach. Uh, you can still uh, teach at uh, secondary, secondary level. So uh, our students, um, some of our students uh, continue with a BSc degree uh, in our department or in other universities. So that's an option. Uh, so we have these kind of students and inter uh, and. Uh, uh, it's good that we have some graduates who are uh, right now we are working with them uh, as um, lecturers, as tutors. So that's that's the advantage. That's the uh, beauty of this uh, program. Uh, we are collaborating with our graduates. So that's another option for you. You can still teach at schools and also at university, or you can select a full uh, academic path. Uh, in education or in sciences. So we have some graduates who continue uh, their career in uh, other sciences and mathematics departments with having a PhD a degree uh, in Manut or in other universities. So these are your options. So for, uh, for our course, I think we have amazing students. So considering the requirements, we have very good students. So uh, that's the beauty of our um, course. Uh, and uh, we have interactive classes, so that's also feed the relationships uh, between student and student and student and lecturers. So uh, that's another advantage. We have spiritual curriculum, so we uh, uh, teach some uh, educational uh, aspects in year three, in year two, and then uh, go deeper in year three and year four. So uh, that's another advantage. Um, as I mentioned, we have a community of learners. Uh, we work with uh, schools. Mm -hmm. We work with our graduates uh, at different institutions. So uh, we have this uh, professional uh, network. Um, and uh, we also uh, work on curriculum development. We also revise our programs and uh, we work on this. And um, and one another advantage is uh, like our students spend so much time in school placement at uh, different schools. Uh, they they have different uh, uh, levels of experience uh, in different years. So that's another advantage. So this is our um, contact information, my uh, email and uh, the department email. Uh, so uh, we would like to have your questions afterwards. Uh, so regarding the questions in the chat box, so uh, I think I uh, tried to explain it, but there was one question about school placement in PME. 
so our students actually do not have any difficulty to find a school place, uh, placement schools for their uh, experience. So uh, for PME students, actually students love, uh, schools love to have uh, PME students. And our year four students, they don't usually have difficulty to find schools. And for uh, our year two, year three students, we find the schools uh, for, that, uh, for uh, our students since they have limited uh, connection uh, at that years, uh, at those years. And for if you start PME from PME one, uh, if you have arts degrees, English degrees, BA and BSc degrees and start from uh, PME one, then uh, uh, I think you are supported from the department to find the school. And in the second year, you find your own placement school. Um, and uh, I think that's my, that's all uh, of my presentation and uh, thanks for uh, your participation. Uh, and I want to give uh, to call our year three science student and maybe he can talk about his experience in the course. Thank you. Thank you, Zaren. So just as Aaron said, my name is Paul and I am in my third year of doing science education. So I'm kind of breaking the science mode or the student mode here where I'm not my final year unfortunately but um I am in my third year and I'm just going to talk a bit about my experience I also want I also won't keep too long because um Jennifer and Anton have pretty much said everything about student life so my experience with the overall course has been very good it's a course that you would want to do if you're very interested in both science and teaching <clears throat> excuse me if you have a combined passion for both of them, this is definitely the course for you. For me, first year was very good in terms of letting me know where my interests lied. I remember walking into first year thinking, oh, after year one, I'm definitely gonna keep maths and biology because they were the ones that I would have liked in leaving, sir. But then first year happened and maths I still loved, but biology, it wasn't as much. But then I started to like physics a lot more. So that's where my decision changed from in maths and biology, what I'm currently doing at the moment. Second year was a really good introduction to kind of knowing where, or sorry, knowing where the education is going to go on from there. So we got a good taste into kind of teaching, presenting, that sort of thing, and also methodologies as well. We got a very good taste of that and also with their placement, being able to observe and sometimes being able to go in and teach a lesson or two. It's very good with kind of keeping the experience of them. It's kind of good to see what other teachers do. So then you can see what works, what doesn't work. So then there are essential tools you can keep on until you graduate. There was a question in the Q&A actually that I was going to answer. Um, to my knowledge, you don't need to do leaving surf biology to do etching it an advantage because you just as in first year, and then if you are interested in biology, you can definitely keep it on and you can teach in the future, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, and now what I'm currently doing in my year three, the placement is predominantly teaching, as Zaren said. Um, I did one or two weeks of observation and now I'm fully thrown into teaching a class. And of course it has its struggles where you have good classes and then you have kind of, kind of assures me, okay, I am going to have some kind of challenges in the way, but as long as I keep myself together, remember my classroom management, it'll be absolutely fine. And also if you are, if you do lose interest in education, if, if somehow that's a possibility, um, as Aaron said, you can leave after second year. If you feel it's not for you, then absolutely you can go on and do that. Um, kind of unsure what else to say, really. Um, it, it is a lot of work, but it, it does pay off. It's very interesting. I have a good connection with a few friends 
and we always give our notes to each other we help each other we help do our assignments and everything and it's a really good course where you can find nice friends in there so I think I'll finish up there I don't know what else to say really so no yeah. that's that's perfect Paul thank you it's always lovely to get the student perspective on that um, just to mention we're very close to the time to just wrap up now so there was just one quick question there that came in and um, just I suppose asking that if a student decides to specialize in two sciences would they be able to teach say junior certificate maths is that still are, are they covered to teach that um, so uh, the two sciences if they select the teaching subjects biology chemistry or uh, physics then uh, they they have uh, the privilege to teach at junior cycle science but not mathematics because they will not take uh, mathematics methodology Perfect. so maybe they can select one of the subject is as mathematics, then they can teach junior science mathematics. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. There still is um, possibly maybe a few other bits and pieces, and I am very conscious of the times. So what I would say is if people have more questions that they want to send, please do get in contact with each of the departments. You know, people are very happy to answer questions. Um, and I just want to say thank you very much to joining us and for all my colleagues for joining us and taking the time uh, to kind of explain and share their information and the perspective from the students. It's been great. And there's a few more webinars on after this at quarter past one. Um, so actually there's maybe a little bit of time for a cup of tea. So things like um, meet the students is a perspective there. There is the arts degree and then the new degrees for 2022 as well. So it's a lot more available if people are interested. So once again, just thank you very much for everyone joining us and for you guys for your time um, and explaining to hopefully our prospective students. Thank you. Thanks all. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Laura.